Welcome to Bible Insights with Wayne Conrad. Today's topic, Revelations on Revelation. The last book of the New Testament has always fascinated people. There's something mysterious and strange about it. Some people have developed elaborate schemes of interpretation. They present their own works on the book as necessary for a proper understanding of Revelation. And for the majority of Christians, the book of Revelation is a locked mystery. They shy away from the reading of this book or from attempting any serious understanding of its contents. Why is this? Well, one reason the book is so close to many is that they feel obligated to attach a meaning to every little detail. And also, they want to be able to find fulfillments of the prophecies in today's newspaper. In other words, they believe those who claim you need a special insight from God to understand the book and that nobody could truly understand it until the current generation. John the Apostle was given the visions of the book, and he then recorded the conversations and the things that he saw that make up the book. The book opens like the Gospel of John and the First Epistle of John with a prologue. The prologues are very important in John's writings for the understanding of what he's going to write about. And here's the prologue to the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants the things that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it, for the time is near. This divine introduction to the book of prophecy of the New Testament is recorded in the opening sentences, and it's very important. What does it tell you? Well, it tells you that if you read or you hear the reading of the book, the words of the prophecy, that you'll be blessed. It tells you that if you heed the warnings in the book and the blessings that are in the book, you'll be blessed. It tells you that if you heed what it's really all about, it's going to help you as the time draws near. Blessed is the man who reads the book or who hears it read to them. The book then opens with a symbolic appearance of the glorified Messiah Jesus who commands John to write what he sees and hears and to send it to the seven churches. So what John sees is awe-inspiring with every detail subsequently and selectively applied to the seven churches. Thus an attribute of the glorified Christ expressed in a symbol is highlighted to demonstrate the presence and involvement of Jesus in the lives of his people corporately and personally. Each letter receives an attribute. Now if we really pay attention to the statements of Jesus, then we have the basic truths necessary to read the book with much spiritual profit. It could be that we will discover the book of Revelation to be no more difficult to understand than any other book of the New Testament. The key lies in approaching the book properly. The first thing we must do is to discard the idea that the Revelation is totally incomprehensible or that the message can only be deciphered by a select number of prophecy experts. Get rid of the experts. Read the book. Doesn't it seem strange that God would end the New Testament with a book that unveils human history and then closes it in such a way that only a few prophecy scholars of the last hundred years or so could understand it? And also, doesn't it seem strange that God would send the letters of seven churches of Asia Minor to be read aloud in those seven churches of which major truths could not be understood until the 19th or the 20th or the 21st century? Our prophecy experts arose to tell you what it meant. Strange indeed would be the promise of Revelation 1-3. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what's written. Surely God would not promise such blessings if he knew we couldn't understand or take its message to heart. 
You see, the problem does not lie in the book of Revelation, but in our approach to it. We ask the wrong questions. We focus our attention on historically identifying every image and every piece of a vision. Our focus is on the details rather than the major events and truths. As a result, we miss the central themes of the prophecy. It's the old story of not seeing the forest for the trees. We could compare the book of Revelation to a huge painting of the end times. If we move too close to examine each brushstroke, the continuity and the grandeur of the painting disappears. If we are to see it aright, we must view the painting in its entirety from a distance. John declared that his book of prophecy is an unveiling making po- made possible by Jesus Christ to reveal Jesus Christ, who he is, what he has done, and what he will accomplish. He, Jesus, is the central figure in history who brings into focus God's redemptive work. He's the one who accomplishes it. In the process of unveiling the consummation of history, Jesus himself is revealed in glory and might. If one reads this book and does not see the glorified Christ, he has read it amiss. John directed, Jesus directed John to send the letter to seven specific local churches in the Roman province of Asia, today's Turkey. Within the large, larger letter, seven individual letters were enclosed each one addressed to one of the seven churches, but all seven of the churches were to read all of the letters. Together, they received the message that the Lord was sending to the churches of all places and all times until he comes again. Thus, the seven churches function as a miniature picture of the church universal, the church representative throughout the world in every age. The fact that the book was sent to the seven churches is very significant. It says a lot about the contents of the book. Everything in the Revelation pertains to the church, to its tribulation, to its hope, and to its destiny. If you read the book and delete the church, then you have read the prophecy wrongly and your interpretation will be wrong. In sending the individual messages to the churches, Jesus manifests himself to John in his glory and his majesty. So his central message is this. I have the seven churches in my sovereign hands. I have the double-edged sword of God's living word to fulfill all of God's purposes for his people. This evokes in John a desire to worship Christ the Lord. So if we read the book and our hearts are not lifted up to God and to the Lamb upon the throne in worship, we've read the book wrongly. Let me challenge you to read the book like a child. Here's some practical suggestions for read. Read the whole book in no more than two settings. The writing naturally divides at chapter 11, verse 19, and picks up again at chapter 12, verse 1. The first half focuses on a series of sevens, first seals, then seven trumpets, with each one of them bringing us to the brink of Jesus' return. And the second half focuses on more seven series with characters, each one bringing us to sort of a climax. The book of Revelation as a whole uses images and visions and symbols primarily drawn from the Old Testament. The major thrust is very clear. Jesus is the conquering lamb through his death and resurrection, and he will return to establish the everlasting kingdom for his people. The ultimate goal of God's covenants will be fulfilled. That goal is expressed many times in the scriptures. In Exodus, Ezekiel, 2 Corinthians, Revelation, this is the goal. I will be your God, and you will be my people, and I will dwell among you. What's the main point of this book? The central thrust of the book is that no matter what the devil throws at God's people, Jesus is has everything under his sovereign control. And he is guiding history to its conclusion at his glorious return. God gave the visions to John to give to the churches for our encouragement and our hope. Fear not, believer. 
Take up the book. Read. Look up, people of God. Take heart and hope. Your redemption draws near. This has been Wayne Conrad, Bible Insights. And the next time, remember, blessed is the one who hears and who reads the prophecies of the book of Revelation.